Time once again for Drink of the Week here on Park City Television, joined as always by the virtual sommelier, Jimmy Santangelo. Jimmy, thanks so much for coming in. You got it, Ori. The holidays are here. Folks are uh, going to parties, and that means it's time to crack open the bubbly. Yeah, we're going to feature some champagne today. we got a few selections for us to demonstrate. Now, of course, uh, everyone knows uh, for it to be called champagne, it actually has to come from that region of France, but you've brought some other sparkling wines as well. That's right. Um, it, we have a cava here and two champagnes, but not in the uh, bigger producers, more what's called grower producers or farmer fizz, as mm -hmm. uh, the people in the industry like to refer to it as. Excellent. Well, let's uh, start right off with uh, the cava here, cava from Spain. Yeah, this is a classic cava. This is a dry, it's referred to as brut, and this is a Cristalino uh, brut cava, uh, nice and clean. And uh, what we have is, uh, um, uh, it'll be nice and simple, nice big bubble in there, uh, a dry, real, real easy, easy drinking. So if you prefer a dry, you should really be looking for a brut or extra brut? Yeah, exactly. Extra brut would even be drier okay. than you have brut. And uh, you may see demi-sec uh, listed on champagne labels, and that would be off dry or a little richness of fruit on the palate. Okay, well, also one of the other things that's important about champagne is opening it properly. Let's crack <laughs> right. open oh, that, you uh, do that let's, let's crack open that cava. You got it. So what we'll do is we're going to do what's called a uh, demonstration cut or uh, uh, proper cut where you cut the foil down here. You do have the little tab there available for you, um, but you always want to do it real nice and uh, real nice and clean for yourself. The key here is you have a cage over the cork, and that cork, the cage is there for protection. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to rotate this over. You have a twist here, and internationally there's uh, six and a half to seven twists okay. normally. The mm -hmm. key. The key here is when opening up champagne, you actually, or a bottle of sparkle, you hold the top and you twist the bottle. Okay. You hold the top and twist the bottle. And what you want to do is just slowly rotate that. And I'm feeling the pressure on the edge. And you're just opening it and... There you have it. It's yeah, just no, no, no need, and then because uh, that way you don't uh, waste all the champagne <laughs> with the big explosion. Right. And while that may be fine if you just won a World Cup uh, ski race, uh, yeah. not so good if you actually plan. Yeah, on Yeah, we can uh, savor it this. at a celebratory time. No, absolutely. But uh, the goal is to hold the top and uh, uh, twist the bottle. Twist the bottle, and that's the safest way to do it while keeping the cage on top. Okay, well, let's, uh, should we, you, yeah, did you please. want to pour some? Yeah, your pardon, yeah. Okay, please. and uh, while you're pouring, glassware is also very important when uh, when serving uh, when serving any wine. No, absolutely, and champagne, these are referred to as flutes, and these are Riedel champagne flutes, and uh, just a real beautiful uh, stem to it, nice long body of the glass itself, fluting towards the top, coning in all the aromatics, and... Uh, just really allowing uh, you to enjoy the bouquet, seeing the bubbles float up and a good surface area for the wine to mm -hmm. open up. And this is really what you want to use, not the uh, old, uh, like you saw in the 1920s, the big uh, wide uh, <laughs> the you champagne know, coupe, coops. Uh, coops yes. Yeah, yeah, those uh, wider cups, which are uh, uh, both good, but the, it'll go a little uh, flatter, quicker, things like that. This is a more modern version. Okay, well, uh, this looks uh, absolutely lovely. While I uh, nose and, uh, and taste this one, why don't you tell me about uh, the others? You got it. Have. These are, in fact, from France in the Champagne region. These are grower producer champagnes. The first is Chartun Taillé. This is a Saint Anne Cuvée. This is a non vintage prepared with Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. Um, being non vintage, this is their Cuvée house style. And this is a grower producer. This is what they grow on their, on their uh, property is what they're going to make. They're not selling it off to other larger grow or larger champagne houses such as Vouv Clicquot and some of your bigger ones. Um, this is a real nice style. In the past few years, it's been more of a hazelnut, buttery, brioche kind of aromatic and good mid-palate weight. Now they're making it in a little cleaner style, a little more uh, stylistic. And when you uh, get into these, uh, you know, uh, uh, grower uh, grower produced, are you also seeing an increase in price? Uh, you know, I mean, are you? I mean, does it? You know, where where does this fall in a, in a range? That is a great question because they're actually more affordable. 
Mm. So you're getting a more boutique style champagne uh, where people uh, are putting their generations and all their family into it and uh, they're they're providing it here to us in the States. So and uh, you know, great way, to, great gift to bring so you're not bringing the same bottle of Veuve Clicquot or uh, Moet de Chandon uh, right. or you know, something like something that like to a that. party. No, you're absolutely right. And it's great for food. You know, champagne's not for breakfast anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have it throughout the day in the evening. It's not just for the holidays. Great with food. Food, uh, food pairing. Okay, well. and let's talk about this. Last and, bottle. and the last bottle is a uh, vintage 2002. This is a Vernier Farnier. Uh, this is Melissa Me 2002 or of uh, great vintage. It's a Grand Cru. There's only 17 Grand Cru villages within the Champagne district. This is one of them. And this is all Chardonnay. So it could also be referred to as a Blanc uh, de Blanc, uh, meaning uh, all, all white grapes are produced in this sparkle here out of Champagne. Okay. And now what sort of uh, flavor notes are you, are you getting in this? A little one? crisper, uh, cleaner, more citrus, uh, almost aromatically uh, very... Um, uh, it could be compared uh, to a Chablis out of Burgundy. Uh, very honeyed, citrusy, clean notes to it. Fantastic. All right, Jimmy, as always, it's a pleasure. If people want more information on picking champagnes, where do they go? Yeah, go, uh, give me a shout at 801-486-WINE uh, uh, or uh, 9463. Thank you, Jimmy. You got it. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, sorry. Drink of the Week is brought to you by Butcher's and by these fine sponsors.